Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So four years ago, I did a video where I was going over Google's voice to text feature and what I found to be creepy about it. So Google has a voice to text feature on Android phones. There's a little microphone button next to the keyboard. When you press it, instead of having to type on this tiny little phone screen keyboard, you can just talk into your phone and it will transcribe your voice into text, which is really convenient so that if you're writing an email, you can just talk your email. If you're, somebody text messages you and you have a really long text to send back, you can just hit the button, talk into your phone, and it'll transcribe the text message. The way this functionality worked back in the day is it would send a low bitrate audio file of your recording to Google servers. The very powerful Google server would transcribe it and then send that transcription back to your phone. The problem with this is that Google's entire business model is to collect as much information on you as a person as possible so that you can be targeted for advertisers. And this is one of the reasons that you may have a problem with them saving voice recordings along with transcriptions of your voice recordings of everything you said into your phone for 10 years. Now, I I, I, I'm again, I was naive at the time. We're talking about 12 or 13 years ago. I didn't think that they were going to save my voice recordings from then until the end of time. Um, but yeah, again, I was naive. I was young and I was stupid. And many of the type of people that tend to be the demographic that watches this channel on average tend to lean towards the, I would prefer to not have a company like Google save everything that I say into my phone for 10 years. But admittedly, some of you like me also like this type of technology and think that stuff like voice to text is pretty cool. I know what you're probably thinking as I explain this. Lewis, you're paranoid. Why would you care? Who's going to look through an old server for recordings of you for anything? And what's the worst that could happen? You're probably unfamiliar with a video I did two years ago on this New York Times article titled, A Dad Took Photos of His Naked Toddler for the Doctor, Google Flagged Him as a Criminal. Google has an automated tool to detect abusive images of children, but the system can get it wrong and the consequences are serious, whereby they reported him to the police. Now, you may think that there are checks and balances in place to ensure this doesn't happen. There were not. There was one Karen working at the company that said, because this individual had a picture on their phone or on their Google Drive or email of the mother in bed with the infant, hugging the infant without her having a bra on, apparently that was enough context to be able to say that you are a pedo and get reported to the police. This messed with his life over the period of one year, as you can imagine occurs when a trillion dollar company reports you to the police and claims you're a pedo. This is the type of thing that can negatively affect your life, which is why I suggest people give Google the least amount of information on them as humanly possible, and that most certainly includes your personal communications. Now, when this voice to text stuff started to become popular around 13 or 14 years ago on Android, our devices lacked the local processing power necessary, at least with portable devices, to be able to do this type of thing locally. That being said, now that we have devices with all this power, then people are buying a new one every year, regardless of whether they need it. I figure we might as well start actually making use of all this power that 99% of the population is not making use of on their smartphone. This is really not a smartphone anymore. This is an advanced computer. You have over eight gigabytes of RAM, a powerful multi-core processor. You should be able to do more of this locally so that Google doesn't have access to it. And that's what I want to go into in this video. So I thought it would be really cool to be able to have this feature without having to send information to Google so that I don't have to deal with a company that Eula roofies me and doesn't tell me that they're going to be saving my voice recordings with transcriptions of, I don't know, arguments I had with my girlfriend in 2009 and 10 for 10 years. And we've actually worked on creating that at a company I work at now called Futo through this fellowship program we have. So we have a fellowship program where if you're a programmer and you're making a piece of software that follows a basic set of principles, which is you don't abuse the end user, it's open source. You do not see the user as the product, similar to the Facebook business model. You allow the user to run their own self-hosted instance of it, so it's not something that can only run in their cloud server. You allow for sovereign identity, stuff like that, that actually respects the user, respects their freedom, respects them knowing what is going on with their computer and controlling their computer, that we will pay you to work on your own project. Not our project, your own project, whatever it is, if it's something we find cool. And I did an interview on my channel a while back with this gentleman over here that made a piece of Linux caption software. And the cool thing about this piece of software that does live captions is that it runs locally. It does not have to connect to the internet to do any of this transcription. Now we talked in the video about making something like this for Android because this would be really useful in an environment where the keyboard is much less comfortable to type on than on a desktop. And he actually managed to put something together. And this is very, very beta, very, very still kind of rough edges kind of thing. But I just wanted to give you all a preview of this because I thought it was cool. So I'm going to screen record on my Android phone using this thing so that you can see it. So here we go. Three, two, one. Now, 
This starts off with you installing a different package called something like AnySoft Keyboard. So if you install a program that has one of those prompts for voice, you install something like this, then you install his piece of software. What you can do is something like this. To be clear here, when I hit that keyboard button, AnySoft Keyboard is not Alex's software. What is running after I hit the microphone button is Alex's software. So I have to install Alex's software on the phone before that microphone button and any soft keyboard will actually work or go to anything. So when you go to notes, you can click the microphone button on the lower left corner. Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. Okay, I actually spoke wrong there. I said ovly instead of lovely. So I'm very curious what it's going to do there. I'm looking into my camera right now, and it's hard to look because the lighting that's right next to the camera is very, very bright, which is why I always have to look to the side of the camera so I don't strain my eyes. I tap to stop. And as you can see, not only did it get a lot of it very correct, but it also inserted punctuation. Now, when I'm using the Google keyboard, I actually have to say the punctuation. I have to say comma period, question mark. This got a lot of it right. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, I, I'm still connected to the internet. You can still see LTE. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to turn off my mobile data and I'm going to turn on airplane mode on my phone and let's try doing this again. So I'm going to hit the microphone, tap. Okay. Oh, whoops. One more time. Now we are in offline mode. I have airplane mode turned on and I have turned mobile data off and I'm not connected to Wi-Fi. Everything that's happening right now is being locally processed on my phone. It is not going online or sending my voice or transcriptions of anything I'm saying to anybody else. This is completely sovereign. As you can see, unlike Google's system that requires that I connect to the internet, this one does not require that I connect to the internet, which is really, really, really cool. And it's just one of the projects that we are working on here at Futo that is, again, trying to give you back control over your computer. Rather than control over your computer belonging to Google or Apple or Microsoft or Facebook or somebody else where you're always connected to their system, where they can disconnect you from their system if they decide to ban you, where they can decide to mine through and look through your data and use it to sell to advertisers or use it to advertise to you in some way, shape or form, the software that we are looking to come out with here, the software that we are looking to produce in-house, as well as fund other people producing, is software that respects your freedom and sovereignty and your privacy. And with this fellowship program, again, there's pretty much no catch other than you have to come here to Austin in order to take part in it. We will give you money to work on whatever your cool project is if it's a project that we find interesting. And if you want to learn more about this piece of caption software, you can watch my very low tech interview that I did, or you can watch his 25 minute presentation. I'll include some links down below to some of this. Uh, his, again, I, I think this Linux caption software is really cool. And I also love the fact that I'm actually able to run it on a phone and not have it feel sluggish. Now, to be fair, to be fair, as, as I showed in my interview, it is a little bit resource intensive in contrast having a cloud service. So you're not going to be installing this on an HTC Incredible from 2010 and using it the way I was when I was first using voice to text. This is a Google Pixel 6 Pro over here that I'm using, which has considerably more processing power available to it than the phone that I was using five or 10 years ago, where this may have actually wrecked the entire thing. But I just wanted to give you an example of one of the things that we're working on here and why it is that I think this stuff is really cool and why it is that I was happy and humbled and honored to meet the people that applied for this round of fellowships. And I look forward to reading through the applications for the summer fellowship program, which we are we have a deadline of next month. So if you're interested in this, there is a three month summer fellowship that we're doing as well. If you have some sort of some piece of software like this that actually respects the user that you think, wow, yeah, there's no way in hell there's any money in this because I'm actually not abusing people. I don't know. Think again. Look in the links down below if you're interested in the fellowship program. And uh, thank you very much to Alex for making this available because now I, we can say that we have actually put our money where our mouth is. Yes, I was aggravated at this. People will say, well, why don't you just make one better yourself? Dude, I'm still on page 16 of Dennis Ritchie's C programming language. I'm not going to make my own voice to text, but somebody that's considerably smarter and better equipped than I am did, which I think is really, really cool. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something.